Hello and welcome back to the series of Disaster Recovery. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, fail back and fail over, as well as I will be talking about some terms which are very important whenever you do the disaster recovery, like RTO, RPOs, ATO, T, ATO, D, so on and so forth. So let's get started. So uh, whenever we, we do a DR planning, there, there are terms called failback or terms called failover. So let me explain you with our basic uh, diagram which we use. So I have your, my production side and I have my DR side. Whether it's a on-premise or cloud, uh, and whenever we do this uh, uh, DR planning for your production, so let's assume here, we have a production, and in this production, I have some some servers, which is which are VMs and some physicals, and uh, these are getting replicated and backed up to the DR side via some MPLS or or side to side VPN. I have a backup server. That backup vault is getting replicated for a physical servers and for VMs. Let's assume we have SRM. If you want to know more about SRM, there is a separate video series I have, or not the series, but separate video in this series I have created, and uh, it has detailed information about how to implement SRM and, and plan the DR with the help of SRM for virtual machines. Uh, so my VMs are there and, and physicals which are replicating, and, and this call, this replication procedure called as a protection. So protection is something which makes sure if your protection is healthy, your recovery will be healthy, okay? Or your recovery will be smoother. If your protection is incorrect or incomplete, your recovery will be facing some challenges or you may not be able to do the recovery at the time of DR. Uh, so so, so this, is, this, this process is called procedure. Uh, whenever I do a DR, whether a DR test, whether it's a DR test or a disaster recovery in actual, let's assume your production site goes down. And uh, whenever we do the disaster test or a actual DR invocation, whenever we do that recovery, that procedure called as a fail over. Because you're failing over your production to the DR site. At the time of fail over, you bring up all the VMs and physical at the time uh, at the DR site and uh, this procedure is called failover and you run your business from the DR site so your users probably which are coming from internet or your your internal employees which are connecting via some site to site VPN they are they're using this production site they're using this production site so, so production work from the DR site and uh, your production site is actually down and this procedure called failover where this failover the production is failed over uh, another term is called fail back so fail back means once your production site is up everything is is restored and you want to move your your or your DR workload to production that procedure called as a failback. For example, uh, in this scenario where VMs and physical servers were recovered at the DR site and you wanted to have <coughs> whatever changed data, which is not available at production, to be, to be replicated back to the production. Because let's assume you had a disaster at 12 p.m. afternoon and uh, you did the recovery at this side uh, somewhere and it took uh, four hours or two hours depending upon RTO and RPO. So I will explain RTO and RPO. I had a separate video on that but still I'll, I'll give some high level RPO. I will give you some high level information here as well. So let's say my RTO was, was four hours so I did complete recovery at 4 p.m. At my 4 p.m., everything was recovered, but whatever data I had, it was from two, uh, 
12 p.m. or let's say uh, 30 minutes prior. And uh, so that was my RPO. So, so after 4 p.m., all the business is running from here. And my, my production side, or, or whichever production was working as earlier, this site come up, let's say, next day, uh, 12 p.m. Or next day, 4 p.m. It will be easy for you to understand. So next day, 4 p.m., Next day, 4 p.m., my production site came back. And uh, <clears throat> I don't have this updated data. So whatever changes has been done by the employees or users and the server database and this transaction, whatever would have happened there after 4 p.m. to next day, 4 p.m., that means this 24 hours of data, which is not available. So you need to plan that replication here or and, and when you do that replication or, or some kind of reverse replication from DR to production, and that might take some more time. And uh, again, then you can you can use RQ and RPO term for, for that uh, replication. Once your reverse replication is completed, then you again call, you bring these servers down at DR side, and then you bring all the servers with the latest data up at production side. And this procedure called as a failback. Okay, this procedure will will come in use only at the time of disaster. So you you will listen this term in this video series ATOT or ATOD. That that means at the time of test or at the time of disaster. So ATOD means at the time of disaster, and ATOT means at the time of test. And uh, that is that is another term which you will learn. I was totally talking about RTO and RPO. So RTO means, for example, when we had a disaster at 12 p.m. and we did the recovery at 4 p.m. and if my recovery time was set for four hours, that means my RTO was four hours. If you have uh, RTO of one hour, then you need to make sure that whatever data it's here got replicated and the system should, should be live and up at DR site for users to use within that time. That called RTO, recovery time objective. What is RPO? RPO is something called how much data loss you can you can accept. For example, uh, so my disaster was called at 12 p.m. and uh, uh, I, I did the recovery. So, so whatever was replicating on the storage level for a virtual machines, let's assume SRM, it will be asynchronous and that RPO could be in seconds or minutes, probably 15 minutes or half an hour maximum. So 30 minutes can be my RPO. Okay, but my RTO was four hours and uh, RPO was 30 minutes. For physical servers, of course I cannot have the replication. Yes, if those physical servers are booting from SAN and SAN is replicated, yes, it can be a 30 minutes. For physical, it could be uh, so for VM it's 30 minutes RPO and for physical servers if you're backing up with the backups and restore it could be 24 hours because you, you will be using latest and greatest backup available which is replicated to the DR site and that will be last um, yesterday's or, or day before yesterday as per availability or as per replication. So uh, this is some kind of a terms which I talked about production failover, fail back, RTO, RPO. At the time of test, whenever we say at the time of disaster, that means the things which we will do at the time of disaster, that means fail back options always happen at the time of disaster. So what is at the time of test? Okay, I never talk about this. So, so at the time of test means for a compliance purpose or you need, if you wanted to make sure that your DR is actually working and that will work at the time of disaster in case so you can do a simulation of the DR and that call as a time of test. So that's, that will be as uh, considered as a DR test. In that test, what happened? You, you basically break this replication. You stop this replication. You isolate this environment and you bring up all those servers, physical certain VMs in the isolated network. That means they will not talk to the public DNS or the users. So there will be a team 
basically a DR team or or some user acceptance team who basically log into these servers and they will verify and validate that okay whatever we are replicating to the DR site is is correct and uh, data is available and uh, we can use it in case actual disaster happens. So steps will be exactly the similar when you do the DR test and which will be exactly the same at the time of DR and, and that is the reason uh, most of the organization they do the DR test. At the time of test it's, it's this, this concept is very important because this is the best time where you can validate your documents, your procedures and your process. Also, you can identify the dependencies on which you have and you can, you can make sure those dependencies are getting fixed or, or, or you, you make some kind of a high availability for, for that dependency. For example, you, you need to make sure that you have enough resources in hand because at the time of disaster, if the site is not, not available or entire city or location or state is not available or there is some kind of a natural disaster, you need to make sure there should be a team who basically do this recovery. They should be aware about those documentation process and all those steps which needs to be followed. So there has to be a dedicated team or vendor who should be ready with those actions to do the DR test. Uh, what else? I think this is enough information which I explained. Uh, I would like to talk about the hybrid recovery as well in this part because uh, what happened, we, we just talk about the DR for infrastructure or a DR for the cloud, but most of the time you need to make sure you, are, you, are, you, you plan your DR for your infrastructure which will work with your, your cloud as well. So let's assume you have your production on-premise data center. You have a DR uh, site and, uh, and, and for prod you have some web servers or something which is in cloud. And uh, whenever I do this DR or failback or failover procedure, failover or fail failback, I need to make sure this accessibility is available so that my recovered systems can talk to the cloud. Uh, there is one more important point that user access and uh, admin access at the time of test, at the time of disaster. So at the time of test, yes, you can have limited users who can access your isolated DR recovered servers or uh, DR assets. But at the time of disaster, you need to make sure that whatever your production users are, are using those resources and assets they should have the access to your DR site. So that includes your users, your customers, and your uh, admins. All three should have access at the time of disaster because it is very important that whatever you recovered that is actually usable okay and you need to plan that accordingly like for users you can have the site-to-site -site VPN from your recovery work area recovery for our customers you can have the public DNS updates and for admins you can have some kind of SSL VPN access to through they can always try to access the, your recovery environment which will be always available or if you if they want to make any changes to the DR site uh, they can log in and they can do the changes. Uh, I think this information is very impo inf informative for you and I hope you must have learned so many things about it. Uh, so we talked about fail protections, failover, failback, RTO, RPO at the time of disasters, at the time of test and, and how the user access should have. We also talked about a little bit about the hybrid recovery and I have a separate video about the cloud recovery and, and on-premise recovery definitely that will cover all uh, these these details in 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 more details i would recommend you you more watch my video if you have any questions put that in the comments or contact me on my blog uh, feel free to reach out to me i will i will try to respond as per my availability and uh, i would recommend share subscribe my channel share these videos like and subscribe uh, i would like to thank you so much for watching have a nice day bye bye